Hi friends, it's Mike Deddy for Athlon Outdoors. Today we're in the beautiful Sonoran Desert in Sonoida, about 15 minutes from the Mexican border. You know, just about two months ago, this place was a tinderbox. There wasn't an ounce of green out here and everything was just waiting to catch fire. It was so dry, in fact, the Bureau of Land Management had to shut down this area to shooting and camping. Um, I'm happy to report we've had our annual monsoons. They continue as I speak but you can see what a little bit of rain does to the desert. Grass is 18 inches high and the cattle have plenty of food. Everyone's happy, including me, because I'm back shooting again. You know, for a lot of years, I carried the, uh, the car PM9 as my personal defense weapon. It went everywhere with me. I carried it in a crossbreed um, appendix holster. And I never once thought that I was inadequately armed until 2018 when SIG introduced their P365. Somehow SIG broke the mold, they broke the code, and they figured out a way to put a bunch of bullets in a tiny little gun. Other competitors were caught flat-footed and it was a hot race for everybody to redevelop a new gun or an existing gun to increase the capacity. Uh, Springfield Armory was first with their Hellcat, brand new gun, great gun. Others followed. Smith & Wesson Shield Plus was a, was a redo of an existing gun. And then the Ruger Max 9, a brand new gun. Well, this thing go unnoticed by Kimber. Kimber engineers spent the pandemic doing exhaustive surveys and talking to customers, seeing exactly what they wanted for concealed carry. And the result of all that extensive research is the brand new Kimber R7 Mako. The R7 has a healthy capacity, 13 plus one with the extended magazine, or 11 plus one with the flush fit magazine. And you'll notice it's got bilateral magazine releases. They can be operated from either side of the gun. You don't need to reverse anything. You can operate it from the left side or the right side, uh, depending on, on if you're right or left-handed. It also has ambidextrous slide releases. So if you're right-handed, left-handed, doesn't matter, you can operate the gun from either side. One of the features I like about the R7 is its trigger. Our test sample had a trigger pull, very crisp, right about five pounds. One of the nice features and one of the things that'll help you shoot the gun very quickly is that it has a firm reset. It's both tactical and it's audible. You can uh, pull that trigger back, pin it as you shoot, release it, and you'll feel how quickly and how firmly that trigger resets. The R7 has a locking system unlike anything I've ever seen before. The current crop of micro compacts all utilize a barrel breech block that locks into the slide's ejection port. Kimber uses a lip at the top of their barrel breech block and that locks into a corresponding cut inside the slide. It allows the, uh, the gun to unlock quickly and there's less angle on the barrel. And that probably helps with control of muzzle rise when you shoot the gun. It also allows the use of a single flat recoil spring. All the other guns I've examined use the dual recoil spring system, but not the Kimber R7. It has enough uh, spring mass there that the slide velocity is perfect. It operates with everything I've tried from range ammunition to hotter plus P ammo. And on that note, plus P ammo, the Kimber manual says, use it sparingly. Uh, excessive use of plus P ammo will accelerate wear on your gun and likely require ma more maintenance. So make sure your hot defense ammo works with your gun and save the range ammo for uh, practice. The Mako's got great ergonomics. I mean, you'll notice right here, it's undercut at the junction of the trigger guard and frame so you can get the third knuckle up there nice and tight. And that gets the, the grip higher on the gun closer to the bore's access to help in muzzle flip, reduce muzzle flip. It's also textured. In fact, the, the texturing is, is kind of nice. I like it. It feels almost like emery cloth. Even if your hands are wet or if the gun's wet, you're going to be able to get a firm grip with it. Everything about it, that graceful arch of the back strap forces the gun up into the tang there. And again, that helps the shooter get a higher grip on the gun. The R7 has dual cocking serrations, so you can operate from the front or the back, whatever your preference is. There's also true glow sights on this, the tritium night sights, so you can have your night fighting capability really in any kind of light condition. Our test gun came with the Crimson Trace CT1500 on it. Very unique sight. It has a three minute of angle dot, 
but it also adjusts the ambient light around it. So you could go from bright sunlight like this into a dark room, never lose your dot. Crimson Trace claims it has between 500, 650 hours on a single CR 2350 battery. That's a battery you can buy at any drugstore or convenience store for just a couple bucks. Um, they also provide a, a, a timeout hood, so if you put the gun away in your gun safe or in your nightstand or something, you don't have to worry about that battery burning. So when Kimber engineers designed the R7, one of the features they wanted was to have the red dot sit low in the slide, and they've done a great job on the Mako. You see that it sits low enough that it can co-witness with standard height sights, not suppressor sights that are stupid high. And in the event that something happens and your red dot fails, you've still got tritium in the front and the rear sight so you can orient your gun in the dark. It's a neat system. I never once lost the dot while I was testing the gun. In fact, we did a lot of shooting up at gun sight with it on the square ranges and also in the shoot houses. Never had any problems finding the dot and it's accurate. It's really accurate. I tried it with eight different ammunitions. Three of those ammunitions were common range ammunitions from 115 grain to 150 grain, and then hotter defense ammo from 77 grain up to 150 grains. Everything fed and functioned fine. In fact, my aggregate group size of those eight different loads was just eight tenths of an inch. That's five shot groups at 15 yards. I'm pretty amazed with it. It gave us a great performance, it really did. It's reliable and accurate, but it's also a good looking gun. If you look at the styling of the slide and how they gave the gun a meltdown so you could carry this gun painlessly, not gonna cut expensive leather, it's not gonna cut your hands or expensive clothing either. And you can probably see where the Mako name came from, especially here at the front. The muzzle's been rounded so you can reholster your gun easily, but it also looks great. It's got great contours, like I said, this is a stainless steel slide and barrel that have been darkened with a uh, uh, PVC process. And not only does it keep the metal from wearing, it keeps the metal looking great. There's not gonna be any bright, shiny spots. It's not a paint finish, so the user's not gonna be able to wear through it. It's a good looking gun. Well, as you can tell, I'm a big fan of the new R7 Mako from Kimber. It has the good looks we expect from Kimber and the performance. 500 rounds, not a bobble, and like I said, I've shot all types of ammo through this gun from mild range ammo to the hottest defense ammo. Haven't had any issues. It's a good looking gun and it's a good shooter. It gives us the performance we need to consider it for everyday carry. And while Kimber might take a bite out of competition, it's not gonna take a big bite out of your wallet. The R7 Mako will retail with the Crimson Trace Red Dot for just $7.99. Now keep in mind that's manufacturer's suggested retail price. Real world pricing is gonna be much less, so check with your local retailer. Without the red dot sight and just an optics plate, the gun will go for $599, and that makes this gun competitive with the rest of the marketplace. For more information on the Kimber R7 Mako, go to its own website, r7mako.com. You'll read all the specs about this. And if you want to read my article on the R7 Mako, take a look at the November-December issue of Combat Handguns. It's going to make a big splash.